morning family it's Tasha Mama prepping so welcome to the channel welcome back to the channel I figured we would take it down a notch and bring it back to food right we are in the middle of a food crisis it's only gonna get worse and I wanted to kind of discuss something that I think is super important and it's a skill that you know a lot of people don't know how to use and what I'll eat what I even mean when we talk about food preservation and I just want to talk you through the importance of that and why I think it's so important right now today to understand food preservation and how to do it and that's two things one I think now right now it's important while we can still get things while we can still stockpile food while we can still get things readily is being able to know how to preserve it, right? Preserve it in a way where it will continue to last longer on your shelf. You know, a lot of things do go stale right away and um, they don't last that long. And so if you're able to preserve them, they will last a very long time. Some things have years of a shelf life already, but by taking it a step further and preserving it, now those items will last forever possibly, or 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, okay? And then two, I think it's important because if we ever found ourselves in a, you know, getting thrown back into the stone ages and we found ourselves where we didn't have electricity and it was a grid down situation, you know, how could you continue to preserve food in a grid down situation? Can you preserve food with no power? And I'm here to tell you that absolutely you can, but it's a skill. You've got to know the different things that you can do and then right now how you can prepare is by getting the products and the different things that would make your life a little bit easier or to give you some versatility or some options when it came to how you preserve your food more so than when we used to be back in the days when they you know our mamas and papas was preserving food you know they had only certain things to work with certain products today there's a lot of stuff out there that could help us okay so I'm gonna go over 10 ways um, that you could continue to preserve food in a grid down situation meaning we are in a situation where there is no power are you able to still preserve food yes you are so we're gonna talk about these 10 things water bathing is one so water bathing you know water bathing is just the process of um, you know you have your pan you take your product you you know you you um, obviously have to have your canning products right you have to have jars lids all that good stuff right um and a good deep pan doesn't have to be a canning pan to be able to water bathe um and then typically your processes are run from anywhere to 10 to 20 minutes to complete a process of preserving some food okay so water bathing as long as you have a fire or a burner or some way to cook you'll and and you have a burner that's big enough or a space that's big enough to cook on a big pot you're going to still be able to water bathe next one is pressure canning again same concept in regards to it's a big pot obviously it's a special pressurized uh, pot um, could you still do this yes there are some new pressure canners on the market that are electric and plug-in that you know people are running to because they're easier in today's world um, but I'm a huge fan of your original pressure canner um, and those you can still do on an open flame or a burner um, you want to try to practice this um, outside and in these unconventional grid down ways so that you can be safe because again with pressure canning you have to be able to regulate that heat and so obviously just doing it on an open flame not everybody can do that um, so you have to practice that. Some people are very good at doing that, but you have to be able to regulate the heat so that you can manipulate and get your levels where you need to uh, get them to and maintain them to where you know your heat is not going too high or too low. Okay, so pressure canning is absolutely something you can still do afterwards. Obviously, you need the products, you need the pressure canner, you need all the things to pull the jars in and out, you need the jars, the lids, all of that stuff, okay? So um, pressure canning, and all the extra things that you might need to do pressure canning or water bathing, right? Maybe pectin for jelly, maybe, um, you know, for pickling, some sort of pickling salt, um, some kind of fermenting regular salt. Just you're going to need to have the things that you would need to be able to can, okay? Next thing I have is vac sealing. Now, a lot of people will be like, okay, well, vac sealing, you know, I do on a machine that is plugged in. Um, but there are hand breaks that you, that are hand vacuum sealers that you can get on the market right now where you can hand pump to close a jar to vac seal a jar okay um rain country she's a very popular channel in regards to um 
uh, food preservation, um, herbs, herbal stuff, jars, vacuum sealing. That's where I basically learned all my stuff on vacuum sealing and she does her jars by hand. Uh, she has a couple other contraptions, but she has um, the handbrake for um, being able to still seal jars. So you have your big jars, you wanna seal something to keep it fresher. If you have the hand one, then you'd still be able to vacuum seal a jar, okay? Um, let's see, um, dehydrating is the next thing. So again, dehydrator, you know, a lot of people have those, they plug in, could you still do it? A couple things that I have, one, people dehydrate meat right in the sun, you guys. They just dry it right in the sun. So somewhere real sunny, you know, you know, I don't know if you've watched, you know, um, Naked and Afraid or different other survival shows, but they will kill something and literally just dry it right on the sun. So it doesn't take a lot is what I'm saying. And it doesn't necessarily take, you know, a dehydrator that plugs into electrical port. So you could, if you have somewhere you can dehydrate meat in an outside setting, they have huge drying racks. I've bought a couple huge cylinder drying racks that hang up that, um, have all these flat shelves. I'll try to find the one I got on Amazon and put it in the description box for you guys. Um, but a very nice one to be able to do it traditionally, like off grid. If I needed to dry something, um, I would have some, some sort of layered. I like the one I got because it's, it's a lot of shelves. They're big and round. You could dr dry stuff out. Um, but it's covered, it's enclosed, meaning you can keep the bugs and flies and things like that off of it, okay? So dehydrating would still be a thing that you could do. Additionally too, you know, you if you still, um, you don't have power, but you have your, um, you're able to light your pilot for your a gas oven, you would still be able to do something in the oven as well as far as dehydrating some kind of meat, all right? All right, next thing I have is Mylar bags. Yes, so oxygen absorbers, Mylar bags, that would still be a thing if you have the products, right? So if you don't have those things, it's grid down, you're not able to buy those things. But if you stocked up on those things, you you have those bags, you would still be able to um, get those bags and um, close them up and do your thing. Now, keep in mind though, you know, how do you close up a Mylar bag um, when you don't have the power to to have a, some sort of sealer. So that would be a concern is how do you seal the bags, um, but with oxygen absorbers and um, putting that stuff in, okay? So that's what you would have to get creative with is, okay, is there a piece of metal that you could heat up in a fire and then just press that down on that Mylar bag to seal it, okay? That's really though, not something that you would be preserving food for something that you're going in and out of a lot or that you planned on going into soon. That's more of a very long-term situation. Let's say you came across a big crop or a big something and you wanted to preserve it or you dried a bunch of stuff and you wanted to preserve it. You know, you could figure it out, okay? Maybe not the, the first thing you'd be running to use in that grid down situation, but still an option. Okay, food grade buckets, again, same idea. If you've got food grade buckets, um, you can reuse those, you can pop the lids, you could take food out, you could put food in Mylar bags and put them back in that. You Let's say you got a big, let's say you were able to get some kind of bulk rice or bulk beans and you, you could then put them in those buckets with your bay leaves and you could store it, okay? So could be another way still to store food. Next thing I have is rejarring. So reusing old jars, so um, pressurized canned stuff that you got at the grocery store that, you, that food came in and that you opened and ate, and then reusing those jars to just basically rejar stuff. Rejarring um, spices, rejarring just simple everyday stuff will make it last much longer, okay, than it being in some of its regular containers. And so if you're using your, you're saving your glass jars from your products that you already had on your shelf that you use, and then you're using those to keep stuff. I mean, something as simple as later, um, putting some crackers in a jarred, a glass jar will make those crackers, even if you do not vacuum seal it, will make those crackers last longer than they would in the traditional bag that it comes in, in the box that it comes in. So just some thought process that glass is your best friend. So don't throw away your old glass jars and stuff because that will be a way to um, keep food. That's also a way to keep food um, 
just in general, okay? Leftovers, um, it's, it, it will be the new tub aware, if you will, okay? So rejarring. Next thing I said was dry canning. So dry canning, you guys, I'm not here to tell you if dry canning is, is good or not. People feel very um, two, two different sides. Some people think it's safe to do. Some people do not think it's safe to do. So again, dry canning, if you had your oven and it's gas and you were able to light the pilot, you could still dry can. Um, so to an extent, you know, dry canning could possibly be an, an option still. Again, not sure how much of that you would be doing, but it could be possibly an option. Next one I have is curing. So curing meat, there's some curing meat that has to still be, you cure it with salts and different things. There's different techniques for curing meat, um, but some cultures have done this for centuries and this is how they do their meat. This is how they keep their meat with no refrigeration and no all that good stuff, right? Now, what I'll tell you is you've got to do your research though because with curing meat, some of those still have to be cooked and then some of those meats do not need to be cooked after the curing process they can just be eaten like salamis things like that okay and then the last one i have is smoke smoker smoking um so preserving meat smoking it to make it last a little bit longer kind of in the realm of curing it um a lot of people do those two options together they cure it and smoke it um, but smoking is very very easy right people you literally could take make a tp on the spot build a fire underneath it stack some meat or whatever it is um and smoke it right there put some branches over it um you can build a smoker you don't have to build a super fancy tall big house smoker either you guys you could build a very small size microwave sized or a little excuse me a little bit bigger and all you have to do is basically have some ventilation, have a spot for your fire or your wood chips or whatever it is that you're going to use to keep that smoke going. And then some sort of trays, okay? And trays could be sticks, okay? Just be, be creative because this could possibly come to your survival and there's a lot of stuff that you can do. And being able to just know how to put a simple smoker together um, could save your life, okay? If you are to a point where you're catching any kind of food a fish anything if you're not able to preserve it and cook it you're dead in the water okay there you have to be able to cook food and so you have the blessing of being able to catch something but if you don't have the blessing and the skill of knowing how to process that meat process that animal preserve it um cook it all that good stuff you're it's, it's not going to matter that you were able to to cook or i mean catch something okay so those are my 10 ways that you would be able to still preserve food in a grid down situation, in a shit hit the fan situation. And um, I think that it's a super valuable skill um, to know even the basics. Like kiddos, they know the basics of preservation in this house, right? Um, so that one day if we get to the point where it's a grid down situation, it's a dire situation, we won't be stressing about how to preserve our food, keep our food and any food you are able to grow, come about, right? Barter, trade, any of that stuff, you still have to be able to, um, preserve it and protect it and make it last for as long as possible. And this is something you can do today by getting some of these things Get in your pantries today and see what you can that you have in there right now that you can preserve to make it last longer. I'm telling you right now, if you have a pantry full of like chips, crackers, cereals, things like that, that stuff is that's that's stale. If you're stocking that and you think you have a whole pantry full of crackers and you're like, I have that, and you haven't preserved it, meaning preserved it in a way where you've taken the air away from the product it's not going to last you guys. And it's, it's already stale. Okay. It's depending on how long you've had it in there. Okay. So get in your pantries now and start practicing this stuff. Now take an old spaghetti jar that you made, right? And you have that jar or an old pickle jar, whatever, wash it, sanitize it, clean it, dry it all the way. Put some Ritz crackers in there. Put some crackers in there and just close it. And I dare you to just do that and put that on the shelf next to a box to the same crackers boxed and then just I don't know two three months from now just see how it was see how those crackers were throw an oxygen absorber in the in that jar that you put the crackers in and just close it and three months from now 
just open it up and, and see which one is stale and which one is perfectly good to eat, okay? Do a little experiment with you and your kids. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below if I forgot some kind of major preserving method. Um, you know, we're all teaching each other. So let, let everybody know in the group if there is a um, go-to method that you like, that you practice, that you heard of. And um, let's teach and help each other. Okay. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Take care. Bye.